This is Stacy in Virginia, and we are in Seattle in our apartment. Winter is a great time to get caught up on reading, so we thought we'd take a little bit of time to share with you what some of our favorite books are. Moving around with the Coast Guard every couple years, this is only a small selection of the books we have, but these are the books that we like to keep with us wherever we go. One of the first books I wanted to talk about is one of my favorites, and that is Changing Works, Visions of a Lost Agriculture. The family worked alone except for the hay harvest, which several farmers did together. Each would contribute a worker or two, and the informally organized crews harvested hay on one farm after another throughout the neighborhood. This was the first form of what became known as Changing Works, which was marked by communal meals as well as shared working. The reason I like the book Changing Works so much is because of the concept of Changing Works. Throughout our journey to become farmers, so many people out there have been so generous with their time and their knowledge and their equipment to help us succeed. We look forward to being able to pay them back in the future when we become successful, but we also look forward to paying it forward to others who may be just starting their journey on becoming a farmer. Here we have a smattering of just general homesteading, farming, livestock, setting up uh, business books. And a lot of these books try to be comprehensive and a problem with that is any book that tries to tell you everything you need to know about farming or everything you need to know about homesteading and invariably is not going to tell you everything you need to know. So just know when you pick up these books, a lot of times they're going to have things that aren't going to apply to what you're trying to do and you're not going to be able to find the specific thing you need to know. So these books we like to refer to sometimes as dreamer books, books that you pick up and look at to get started, but you are going to need more information. I think the most important structure on a small farm is probably the workshop. Uh, it's the center of the universe. Uh, everything kind of works out of there. Things get repaired and it's what keeps the farm moving. So two books that I found helpful, especially when we were starting up our farm and building our shop, which was the first structure we built wisely, was how to set up your farm workshop. This was handy. This is more set up for maybe some larger farm workshops, but there is some things in here that uh, could apply to a smaller farm as well buying and setting up your small farm or ranch. So within Lynn Miller's book here, he does have a good section on the farm shop. Quote, there are some basics which come into play almost all the time. It is the opinion of this author that you cannot farm happily and with appropriate frugality unless you have a well-equipped farm shop. Unquote. Truer words have never been spoken. This is our substantial collection of haymaking books. As you can see, there's a total of four. Uh, really, there's not that much out there on haymaking. I guess they just assume you know how to do it. But we found them handy, especially the first year we made hay. After we made hay the first time, a lot of stuff made sense, uh, but these were good books. We'd also like to share some of the grazing books that we look at. Grass Productivity is the granddaddy of grazing books by Andre Voisin, and he saw that it was the time that cows spent in a pasture that determined how the pasture regrew. This is a difficult book to get through. Bill Murphy's Greener Pastures on Your Side of the Fence. It's a good interpretation of the Voisin method. Now, Bill grew up on a dairy farm in Wisconsin, and he taught at the University of Vermont. So he puts kind of the Voisin method in layman terms. So this is a really good book to read if you want to get a good overview of the Voisin method and a start in rotational grazing by Sarah Flack called The Art and Science of Grazing. Now this book is very accessible. As you can see, it's broken into really good chapters. It's got good photos. It's got case studies and graphs and charts. So this we highly recommend, especially if you're looking for just one good overview book of uh, grazing and rotational management. Grass-Fed Cattle by Julius Rochelle. He's a geo geologist from uh, Canada and he uh, writes a really good book about um, cattle and their interaction with the soil and has a lot of really good information about grazing and also infrastructure. Now of course we can't talk about grazing and cattle without talking about our friend from Virginia, Joel Salatin, and his uh, book Salad Bar Beef, which is still a really good book that has good information about grazing and setting up infrastructure. This is just a page 
from the book The Age of Barnes by Eric Sloan. Now, The Age of Barnes is not a book that's ours. It's actually from the King County Library. And I just want to put a plug in for all the libraries out there. They are a great resource. And if they don't have the book you're looking for, usually they can get it ordered in. So don't forget about your libraries. He taught weather. He actually taught weather for the U.S. Navy and wrote books about it. And one of the books we have is Eric Sloan's Weather Almanac. And I think it's important for all farmers to have at least a basic understanding of the weather. Uh, you can get forecasts easily enough off your computer from the TV, but you know every farm is different. There's microclimates. Uh, it's important to understand how your farm uh, reacts within the greater world. Uh, but Eric Sloan here, he combines uh, his amazing artwork with a very easy to understand text to describe weather. Another book that I really like is A Golden Guide on Weather. Now some people might consider this more of a children's book, but it is really good at illustrating principles of weather and helping you understand it. So even though this is small and it's made for uh, a younger audience, do not dismiss the, the knowledge that's in this book. One of our main goals this year is to garden on our own farm. Now, while we've been transferring around in the Coast Guard, we have had the ability to do some small gardening. And while we've done that, we've had this one book that we have looked at, the Garden Primer. Now, this book has basic information about gardening, including different varieties of vegetables and herbs and flowers. Books by Elliot Coleman, The New Organic Grower, and The Winter Harvest Handbook. We've been using the Week by Week Vegetable Gardener's Handbook, which just kind of walks you through some basic things of when you should be doing different things to help us plan a little bit better. By Michael Phillips, The Holistic Orchard has a lot of really great information that we're looking at right now for helping lay out some of the orchard and different uh, berry and bushes that we are planning to plant. It's a Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold. Uh, he was a very early conservationist and uh, one thing he writes about that's important to me is what he calls a land ethic. I think it's also important to have a good understanding of what wildlife and flowers and other living organisms are on your farm. We don't have them here. Uh, they're actually on the farm because that's where we use them, but we also have books like Weeds of the West and other books to help us identify weeds and pasture plants. In 2015, Virginia and I attended a week-long draft horse workshop in Montana hosted by Doc Hamill and his partner Kathy. That week we spent there really cemented our desire to have draft horses as part of our farm. Doc Hamill has just come out with a new book that is very excellent and we highly recommend. And Doc also has a full set of DVDs uh, that we can recommend. The Workhorse Handbook and the second one is Training Workhorses, Training Teamsters. So these are two pretty substantial books uh, by Lynn Miller that we recommend. The New Horse Powered Farm by Stephen Leslie. Stephen Leslie is a farmer and he actually has a dairy farm and he is a market gardener. Uh, mostly he uses his horses. He has fjords, uh, which is the same breed we would like to have, but he uses them in the market garden but does find ways for them to help out with dairy farming work as well, spreading compost and helping with the haying. So uh, we've actually had conversations with Stephen Leslie. He's another one of those changing works type mentors who has offered us tons of information and we are really grateful. And he writes good books too. While filming, we just got a book delivered. So let's see what it is. Treating Dairy Cows Naturally. This is by Hugh Caraman. He's a vet who specializes in organic animal care. So we looked at this book online and thought it would be a good book to add to our collection. Uh, we already do have a book by Hugh Caraman, The Barn Guide to Treating Cows Naturally. And so we have that to add to our collection. And then another book that was recommended to us by some organic dairy farming friends of ours is Alternative Treatments for Ruminant Animals by Dr. Paul Detloff. And then finally we just have a general uh, veterinary book, veterinary book for dairy farmers. 
Uh, all of these are good books. I will caution you, if you look at these books, you're probably going to freak yourself out because you're going to start imagining that all the things you see in the pictures in these books are going to happen to your own animal. So just uh, buyer beware, but definitely good books to probably have on hand. Of course, we also have a lot of building books because we were planning our house for a very long time. We wanted to do some green building options in our house, so these are two books that we looked at, Green from the Ground Up and Your Green Home. This was originally a library book, but our dog, Bowditch, decided that it tasted good, so she chewed up the edge of it and we ended up having to buy it from the library. But both of these were okay for getting some general concepts on green building. We also uh, did research online at the, uh, I think it's Green Building Advisor. This book here, Building an Affordable House, had some good ideas on how to, uh, not necessarily cut corners, but how to think in a way of building affordably, uh, saving materials, you know, how you're designing your house. Um, for example, like building a, you know, two foot, as opposed to having something that's three foot long, thinking about material length, things like that. Thanks for joining us on this exciting trip along our bookshelf. If there's any titles that you noticed uh, on our bookshelf that we didn't cover in the video and would like to know more of our thoughts, please feel free just to write us in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we will see you next time. On the Tomarosa.